Welcome to the DEF CAM. The public display of the LD-8A anti-radiation missile alongside the J-35 stealth fighter at the Changchun Air Show signaled the arrival of a weapon engineered specifically to dismantle modern radar nets rather than merely threaten launchers. Observers noted that the missile's external geometry and mass distribution closely mirror those of the PL-15 long-range air-to-air missile, but the internal architecture diverges decisively. The LD-8A substitutes interception logic with a radio frequency seeker and a signal processing chain tailored to detect, classify, localize, and home on electromagnetic emissions. From Pakistan's perspective, the weapon represents a targeted response to a strategic problem that has long favored the fielding of expensive, fixed sensor arrays to deny airspace and shape operational behavior. Anti-radiation missiles use the enemy's own transmissions as a beacon. Modern radars attempt to defeat such weapons by hopping frequency, using low probability of intercepting waveforms, or deploying decoy emitters. The LD-8A counters those tactics through a wideband front end, high dynamic range receivers, and digital spectral analysis capable of real-time classification. These elements permit the missile to follow agile emitters across broad swaths of the electromagnetic spectrum to reject spurious signals and to prioritize high-value nodes such as acquisition radars and long-range surveillance arrays. Packaging this capability in an airframe similar in size to the PL-15 lets fifth-generation stealth aircraft carry the weapon internally, preserving low observable characteristics while gaining the ability to conduct suppression of enemy air defenses from standoff ranges. Integration between platform sensors and weapon electronics is central to the LD-8A concept of employment. A stealth fighter can approach contested areas with passive detection suites that produce bearing-only tracks and emitter-type identification without betraying the platform's position. Once an emitter is classified and located with sufficient geolocation confidence, the aircraft transmits a target packet to the missile through a secure data link. After release, the missile fuses its passive seeker measurements with inertial navigation and optional mid-course updates to maintain a refined intercept solution until the seeker attains terminal lock. This handoff and continued receptivity to external updates make it difficult for defenders to defeat the missile by temporary shutdown of radars. Even a powered-off emitter leaves a last-known location cue that the missile can use to arrive in the emitter's vicinity and reacquire transmissions should the radar attempt to resume operation. The aerodynamic commonality with existing long-range air-to-air missiles offers operational and logistical advantages. Standardized carriage points, common electronic interfaces, and similar storage envelopes reduce complexity for squadrons operating mixed loads. An aircraft sortie can therefore be configured to suppress air defenses and simultaneously retain air-to-air self-defense, lowering the number of sorties required to achieve mission goals. Range performance, while not officially published, appears sufficient to place the launching platform outside the most lethal engagement envelopes of ground-based interceptors, enabling standoff suppression and reducing exposure of delivery aircraft to direct fire. The suspected use of the LD-8A or a close derivative during May 2025 skirmish altered the tactical environment in a concrete way. Reports and imagery from the engagement window suggested abrupt and coordinated failures of radar sites associated with long-range surface-to-air missile batteries. The pattern of outages, the location of damaged hardware, and the timing of events cohere with a campaign focused on emitter neutralization rather than indiscriminate destruction. If accurate, this application converted sensor nodes into silent artifacts, effectively blinding local defense umbrellas and permitting subsequent strike operations to operate with reduced early warning and tracking support. From a doctrinal standpoint, the assault on sensors exposes a fundamental vulnerability in strategies that depend on fixed or semi-fixed surveillance arrays to create area denial. If the sensors themselves become the primary target, then the expensive interceptor infrastructure they support loses its operational value. The effort and expenditure that go into deploying layered defensive architectures yield diminishing returns when an adversary can surgically remove critical nodes from the battle network before engagement. For Pakistan, which faces numerical disparities in certain categories of platforms and sensors, the ability to negate high-value defensive assets through tailored precision tools 
is a force multiplier that can restore operational freedom and expand options for both defensive depth and offensive reach. The combination of stealth delivery and an advanced seeker missile impose a difficult choice on defenders. Remaining active gives timely target data but invites a precision strike that can rapidly remove the node. Powering down protects the hardware from immediate destruction but also eliminates the protective sensor coverage that gives interceptors and area defenses their effectiveness. Either outcome degrades the cohesive integrity of a defensive bubble and enlarges windows for follow-on operations such as strike packages, maritime interdiction, or suppression of additional emitters. Technically, the LD-8A appears to address shortcomings of older anti-radiation designs. Legacy weapons suffered from narrow frequency coverage, sluggish signal processing, and limited resilience to deceptive tactics. By contrast, a modern seeker with digitized front ends, adaptive filtering, and machine-assisted classification can track frequency agile radars and reject low probability of intercept emissions masquerading as legitimate signals. Guidance logic that prioritizes command and control and long-range surveillance emitters ensures that the most consequential nodes are targeted first, producing disproportionate operational effects from a small number of strikes. Strategically, the demonstration and presumed operational use of the LD-8A recalibrates regional calculations. It weakens the deterrent value of imported long-range air defense systems that rely on persistent, high-fidelity radar coverage to deny access. It forces potential adversaries to invest in emitter mobility, redundancy, concealment, and active protection measures that increase complexity and cost. For Pakistan, the availability of weapons that can defeat high-end sensor networks aligns with a broader approach that combines surveillance, electronic attack, precision strike, and resilient command systems to impose asymmetric effects against larger forces. The broader lesson is that sensing layers are not invulnerable simply because they are expensive or technologically advanced. Integration, adaptability, and systems thinking determine whether a defense network can survive in a contested electromagnetic environment. The LD-8A, as showcased at Changchun and as reportedly employed in combat conditions, embodies an operational philosophy that seeks to neutralize the adversary's ability to see and thus to act effectively. For any state operating in a high-threat region, that lesson requires rethinking how to architect sensor and shooter relationships to preserve mission effectiveness under focused suppression campaigns. For Pakistan, the weapons emergence confirms the utility of pursuing targeted countermeasures that enable strategic flexibility and operational freedom despite disparities in platform numbers. Thanks, and stay connected to the upcoming videos.